Hey, good afternoon everybody. It's Sunday, June 26, 2022. It's a bit of a hot day here. I'm out in Reading for my first visit to the Reading Railroad Heritage Museum. This is actually in Hamburg, Pennsylvania. So we're actually between Port Clinton and Reading. And they've got a small museum here. This had been uh, closed during most of the pandemic. They are finally reopened. They are uh, reopened weekends only. And we're gonna go inside and I think we're gonna start off with the yard tour. And we bought this around 2008. And up until, up until 2000 and, uh, 2000, it was the Pennsylvania Foundry. Over here, you'll see a, 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 our rail preservation, a rail car uh, repair facility. That is a very inexpensive building, but it has a very expensive foundation. Normally they are uh, owned by the railroad and they are used for everything uh, but they are loaded from the top and offloaded from the top. Uh, right now this car has our uh, turntable in it, uh, <coughs> which, is, uh, which, which will be put into uh, our uh, museum uh, as soon as we get the room and the money for it. But you can see that the, uh, the sides of the car are taken out, uh, they're cut out, and uh, when when we're finished with it, we can put those sides back in if we have to. Car behind that, or passenger car, uh, looks uh, looks like that is a, a that's a septic car. It's a coach. Does, does not have uh, does not have a chronograph on it. I don't think it does. Uh, but the and those cars are electrical. Electrical. Mm -hmm. This carries its. The diesel engine runs a generator, which generates electricity to the traction motors. That gets its electricity from overhead runners. Are you guys from around this area? Yes, yeah, Swakerton. Swakerton. Okay. Okay. North Ham <laughs> Northampton. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> okay. So kind of near Jim Thorpe. Yeah. So so you know what an overhead line is, right? Yep. I grew up near the Northeast Corridor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, what I know. <laughs> When I, <laughs> when I uh, first I started, Lansdale. Lansdale? Yeah, Lansdale okay. area. Orland, I grew up in Orland. Oh, okay. 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 Out here, the Reading is the Reading is a uh, freight railroad which also carries passenger trains. Where I grew up, it was we a passenger, passenger railroad trains. that carried freight trains. This one, this is my favorite. Okay. Uh, GP7. That is nice. Made in 1952, and this is the first generation uh, diesel locomotive. Okay. Uh, who can tell me where the front of the engine is? Right there. <laughs> what? Long hood forward. That's the F. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. For the F. Yeah. You'll find every engine has an FOA. That's an F4A rule, front regulation. Um, this engine, the F, is on this side. Now, long hood forward. Someone mentioned. Um, Door Fork and Western operated long hood forward for yeah. many, 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 many years. They, when they first came out with the diesel locomotives, they, uh, the crews were quite used to looking down the long barrel of the steam locomotive. 
and they had a uh, uh, fireman on the other side which called out the signals. So they were quite used to uh, look, uh, operating long hood forward and they thought it was safer, but it is no, look at the face yeah. of this thing. That's no more safer if you hit a car than that is. So this was the last. Well, that sure is. Give you guys an idea on size. My head comes up to about the bottom of this bell here. This one's an Alco C630. Here. Ah, thank you, RJ. Yeah, RJ is showing you just how big this diesel is. I'm 5'5". Five five. That is what the EMD serves as a matter. General purpose. Thank you. Uh, diesel give you guys a sense of how big that diesel is. It's a pretty big one. That's an Alco C630. It's a six axle diesel. Yeah, this is EMD. Yeah, that's, uh, that's important to remember. These are EMD locomotives. Is this what they have up by you? Yeah, but those are Alcos though. Okay. A model of every diesel locomotive builder uh, that the Reading did business with which was every one that, that was existent. We have a Baldwin in here, we have a uh, Fairbanks Morris in here, but first off, they got with the uh, EMDs. This is what you got. It is a GP, as a uh, F7, FP7. This also has 1500 horsepower, and this was the, these were the only passenger locomotives that the Reading owned. Uh, excuse me, exclusively passenger locomotives that the Reading owned. The back door contains a, a steam generator unit which generated heat and electricity for the following passenger cars. Prior to that, when they had steam engines, they would just run, run the uh, piping down from the steam engine to the passenger cars. But the uh, railroad thought this was the cheaper way to go, and this is why it has that extra door on it. This also has 1,500 horsepower and was geared to do 89 miles an hour, which back in the late 50s, 50, uh, that was a good 52, yeah. that's pretty fast. Yeah. 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 Yep. What did <laughs> put RSE-14 on? Uh, that was their own classification. Okay. Yeah. This is a GP30. This is GP30. This was the first GP30 ever made. Oh! Oh, no kidding. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about GP30s on the phone on the way over. Uh, this is the first GP30 yeah. ever made. I Very cool. I the Reading had uh, bought this and they had a open house at the Wing Terminal. Guys, you're looking at the first GP30 ever made, ever made and you know that's a diesel I love. <laughs> Me and Nick are in heaven now. Okay. Okay. 62. 1962. Horsepower is 2,250, and you'll see that as we progress. You'll see the horsepower go up. Um, the interesting thing about this is that it's this is also an EMD product. You can see that the windows are, are back on, on an angle. The, the front is on an angle, uh, and it has a more outstanding paint scheme. All that was as the influence of the automotive division on EMD. Okay, so that explains. Yes. No, it wasn't aerodynamics. It was make it look fancier. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's my favorite. It's got that <laughs> right. yeah. It's got style. It's yeah, got it's got style, right. And they, they say you'll sell more engines that way, but they never did. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is the only, only model of that that, <laughs> right. that is that is like this. Mm. It has the beetle brow and, and all that. Yep. You can see that it's flared back. But again, that was uh, the automotive division saying, oh, but the running did stick with the uh, more outstanding paint scheme. I don't have the adapter plugged into it. Uh, <laughs> Restart. I'm not recording any sound. Now, so play it back. 242. 242. Yeah. So there's some audio. Uh, it was <clears throat> in 1976 when Reading uh, Conrail came into existence and the Reading went out of business. They sold this to the Green Bay and Western Company, the Red, and then the Green Bay and Western Company went back to us. And this was originally a Reading engine. And these replaced the RS-27s. Yes, yes. Because I just did a review on one, and I said in the notes, it's like, here's, here it is. I just did a review on one of these, and here's its replacement. That's crazy. Okay, so that's, here's an Alco. It's our first non-EMD builder. And 
And here's another Alco. <laughs> this is an RS3. That's ours. This is a beautiful engine. Uh, Alco RS3. This is not one of the beauties. <laughs> this, is, this is in really bad shape. And it was used in a, um, uh, a mining company mm. up in Canada. Uh, but originally it was a uh, running engine, so they donated it back to us. It's actually this car is the LEM2. And the LEM2 stands for Locomotive Engineers Mobile Training Unit. Uh, this was always parked on track number one of the ring terminal and when I was a kid you didn't have two cars in a family. If you had two cars in a family you didn't belong in Orland. <laughs> 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 and so you know if you did anything for example my mother when she went to the bank would take us on the train and we would go down two uh, stations to Glenside, walk across the street to the Continental Bank. She would do her banking, come back across the street, catch a train back to Orland. Or if you had to buy clothes for school or Christmas shopping or anything like that, you went into Rain Terminal. And Rain Terminal was the place to go. And that was always parked there. I knew what it was. LEM2 was for the locomotive engineers training uh, when they came off the steam engines or when they were hired onto the railroad, they would be in this classroom. And I always wanted to go inside. My mother was like, no, 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 we don't have time. You can't go inside that. I never got in the inside of that until I started volunteering here. And mm -hmm. you can do it all you want. <laughs> now I can do it all I want. <laughs> it is the coolest thing you ever wanted to see. So you're going to take us in and show us that, no, right? No, I'm not. I can't. Aww. Uh, but, but it is pretty cool. It has two simulators in it. It has an air brake simulator. It's a classroom. Um, it is really the classroom coolest classroom. Rails. Keep an eye on our, on our uh, uh, website because every so often we do have uh, these cars open. This is well worth the uh, trip and the president's car is also rolls on it. The president's car was built in 1924 and uh, it is exactly the way it was in 1924. Well, they're trying to open the door on that car. <laughs> or we found a ghost. It's haunted by the lead ghost. Looks like they're working on this one, guys. Wow. It's your journal box, yep. right? Yes, the fire starter. Mm -hmm. And war. Yeah. <laughs> and war. Now, I'll tell you a hand signal for this is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not that bad. How's that feel again? It's ah. bad. <laughs> All right, let's see the hand signal. See, here's the hand signal. Okay. Hand signal for a hot journal box by day <laughs> is this. What's the guy doing? Smoking a cigarette? No. Mm -hmm. Holding his nose. Oh, P.U. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, because they stunk. Yeah. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. P.U. And that's what, the, um, that's what the cupola up top was for on the caboose. And we'll see that when we get into the caboose. That two guys sat up there and the rear, two of the rear brakemen sat up there and kept a lookout for a hot journal box because inside this is a well there's a brass fitting but there'll be a, a rag and the rag is soaked in grease and that's what keeps that lubricated when that does not when the when the grease gets all burned off uh, it can heat up and break the axle and then pull it what year is this one built? Uh, 1942. 42. Yeah, 1942. Oh, now, this was the last uh, group of engines at the Rangel. Yeah. 1974, I believe. 
This is. Brakeman here, yep. and another brakeman there, and a third brakeman around the uh, corner, relaying signals back and forth, hand signals, mm. and that's that's the way they communicate. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Is there plans to make this back into a ready unit? Or oh, absolutely! Still... All these engines. Okay. Will be well, this one won't because right. that's its original color, but all these engines will be painted uh, green. So did you guys get that one recently? Yes, this is about two months. Uh, no, maybe more than that now. Okay. Uh, three or four months ago, yeah. And again, donated to us by CSX Corporation. Oh, nice. Oh, absolutely. That's very absolutely. nice of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Reading and Northern will donate their time and an engine. See, our, our property ends at their bridge. Ah. Reading and Northern will deliver it to us. Okay. Yeah. I kind of wonder, because we've been tracing out the lines. Nick and I have been chasing 2102. Uh, gotcha. J and RJ have too, but <laughs> Nick and I have been pretty zealous about it. And I'm a big fan of the RDCs because they used to come into the town I grew up in. Yes, yes. And I finally got to ride Reading and Northern's last fall for the first time. Really? Yeah. You never, never ri I never ready? got to ride on them. Oh. Well, I say that, but... They're cool. Let's put it this way. My dad's a huge rail fan, mm -hmm. and I spent my whole childhood watching, riding, playing with the models <laughs> in the basement. Odds are we rode one at some yeah, point. Right. I just, just don't, don't have that... It. Yeah. I don't yeah. have that recollection. Yeah. But there I do want to know the story behind these two, because I saw them from the highway, and they piqued my interest. They're both reading. Okay. Original, original and they belong Redding. to the museum, not Reading and Northern. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, museum. the one was up in Boston. Okay. That's, that's the Boston Depuy on it. The other one, I'm not sure exactly where it was, uh, but Canada had had a bunch of them. Too. Okay. Yeah, but they were all original Reading. Okay. Every engine you see here was originally a Reading engine, with two exceptions. Yeah. And I'll point the uh, two okay. exceptions out to you. Any plans to get those running? Oh, absolutely. They do run. They do run. They do run. Right. Guys, you heard it here first. I found two more RDCs that run. Yeah, they're both run. Now we got to find somewhere to take them. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but the RDCs are direct drive. They are not diesel electric. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, okay. direct drive. They're diesel locomotive. Okay. Diesel engines on the top of the roof. Okay. And it comes down. Oh, you mean, like I always they're assumed they were diesel they're electric. They're not rubber band driven like no. mine. <laughs> no, they're not rubber band driven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, learn something new about the Budliners today, they guys. They have an scales, rubber band driven. <laughs> a uh, fender of a, of a steam locomotive, inside there's a baffle that separates the pole from the water. This one has no baffle in it, and it was used for fire suppression. It was just one big tank. And they would mount uh, they would mount the uh, hoses uh, on the the corner and just from the train down the track. You really had me baffled now. <laughs> <laughs> it's the cold, yeah, it's what I call the Dixie Cup. Alright, so we're getting as close as we can to these bud cars here. There's a fence separating us between uh, me and my dream cars. Um, I'm told that they run. The catch is figuring out where to run them. Uh, this old shop here, this is Blue Mountain and Redding. This is, uh, I found out this is still owned by Redding and Northern. Uh, they have one of their box cars here, but uh, the museum is allowed to drive through that building because that track accesses their new shop. And now I gotta go to the caboose because I'm missing the best part of the tour here because, well, you know me, bud liners and I get distracted. <laughs> So this looks like the same kind of caboose that we took a ride last year up in Jim Thorpe on the Lehigh Gorge Scenic Railway. This one's in a rougher shape, but let's go uh, check out the inside. Uh, 
Now did this one. We all ran it rode the one on Reading and Northern behind. Mm -hmm. Okay, caboose is divided into three sections. First section is the sleeping section, and the sleeping section is for the crew to uh, sleep to get their uh, eight hours of sleep. Uh, because back in the day, you work 16 hours, and there was a six-man crew, three men in the front, three men in the back. And at the end of 16 hours, they call it drop dead wall. That's it. You didn't work anymore, and that's a federal regulation. You did not work anymore. So eight hours of rest would have to be somewhere in here. You know, this is where they would sleep for their eight hours of rest. Uh, at, for example, if you're in Armpit, Pennsylvania, and you just ran out of your 16 hours, uh, you got you got to stop the train and uh, come back here. This uh, is the uh, working section. Uh, there's four benches up here. Uh, they're not here now, and we will put the four benches back. But this is where the uh, brakemen, the two rear brakemen, sat and looked at over the train as it was rolling down the tracks checking for hot boxes and uh, what have you. Um, back here where all the tools are uh, and, the, and there used to be a, a, a rag here that, that very clear it does move which very clearly uh, showed that uh, what kind of rag that they used and it was also a, a handy dandy Texaco uh, hot box repair kit, which consisted of blocks of grease, and and that's what the that's what they did. If there was a hot box uh, detected, one rear brakeman would work walk a mile back, put a torpedo on the track for any uh, trains coming. And another one would walk up this side, and the head brakeman would walk down that side looking for the hot box. When they would pull that thing open, take out the rag which was on fire and uh, put in a new rack and new grease. They could also do basic repairs and uh, derailments. Uh, they, they could uh, put the uh, car back onto the track if it was a little derailment. If it's a big derailment, forget it. Okay, the next section is the third section, the living section, and this was the heat and was also the cooking section. And right up until they got rid of the cabooses, they were many, many uh, conductors who were gourmet cooks and they could cook up a meal that would uh, knock your socks off. Um, could they feed an army? They'd be a small army. Small army. <laughs> a train army. A six man, six man army. A rail six crew army. army. <laughs> right, a rail crew army. And, um, but back here you had uh, where you washed up for dinner and your drinking water and they could make coffee and what have you. Over here was where the uh, conductor sat. This was his office. And he would fill out one of these cards, a way bill for each and every car that he had in his consist. And he would also uh, fill out a card you know, for an empty car and a bad order car. He would uh, fill out two cards for that and a couple of other things. But he also, his main, his uh, really important job is he would keep an eye on the air pressure of here uh, in, in the back the uh, rear car and it should be between 70 and 90 uh, if it went below that he had to find out why it went below that probably because of a uh, uh, hose coming apart or if it went above that he had to find out why it was uh, too high all that is well and good they got rid of the cabooses and they got rid of the cabooses and replaced them with Fred. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> a flashing <laughs> rear end detector. Yep. And what the fr Fred would do is Fred would sit in the last coupler of the last car and hook into the air air brake system. Um, and then through that radio there, it would he would uh, transmit to the engineer the constant. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> the constant air pressure. Of the car. Uh, they also um, have every so often five or ten miles they would have uh, uh, equipment detectors, hot box detectors, hot box detectors <laughs> but they also read dragging equipment and they also uh, excess height 
uh, uh, detectors. So that's how they got rid of the uh, the uh, rear brakeman. You no longer had rear brakeman. You no longer had a caboose. Now the the crews were not terribly upset when they get rid of the cabooses because they are death traps. If you happen to be in the caboose and a train hits you from the back, <laughs> I don't care if it's made out of armor. It's mm -hmm. not. You're not going to survive it. You're going to be dead. The other thing is slack action. You all know what slack action is. Okay. Six inches here, six inches there, minimum, uh, so that the engine's traveling 100 feet on a 100 car train before that caboose even decides to move. And when he does move, boom, knocks people yep. all over and they have broken arms and broken legs and knocks your coffee over, burns you. Knocks your coffee, yeah, mm -hmm. burns you, yeah, you get right. Knocks your food all the stove. Yeah, yeah. It makes for a whole a bad day, but that's um, that's why they got rid of the cabooses, uh, and you know they weren't terribly upset about it. Um, so the crews now go from six men down to two, hopefully stay at two. and hopefully stay at two. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, uh, believe me, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be out in the tracks. <laughs> uh, where would I play <laughs> with a train? Although in England they don't even have headlights on the train because wow. you're not supposed to be on the tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're on the tracks, you're trespassing. But that's the way it is. Okay. Well, any questions? Here in the states, you're trespassing too, only if you get caught. Yeah, only if you get caught. Yeah. Uh, the one thing, if you ever decide to steal an engine, the one thing that they can never get you on is stealing the property. Hmm. Because you never took it off the property. Oh, that's true. <laughs> ah, they get you everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's if you know how to start a locomotive up from a cold start, because <laughs> that is not easy. No, all it's the not. switches. No. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't have that little key, you ain't going anywhere. Uh, no, no, you're you can't just pull right. the choke and turn the key. Yeah, yeah. no, <laughs> it don't work like that. All right, so catching up with the tour here. Guys, Randy was just telling me he had a little more information on this. This line here that runs through the building and then out to the museum's building, that was the former Pennsylvania Railroad line. Yeah, it looks like we got a boxcar and that's followed by a slug. And I've never seen one of these in person, so hopefully you could tell us something about it. The problem was because they were diametrically opposed piston engines, they were maintenance nightmares. You had to pull the whole engine off to do anything. Fairbanks Morse, by the way, is still in business. Yeah. And they made uh, they made the uh, submarine engines during the war and figured, oh, we got a great engine here. Yeah. Well submarine you got a little more room. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you don't that's what the lane had it. The train master. So is this is a, is an actual slug though, not yeah, this yeah. Is a slug. okay, yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. Uh, and then this looks like this looks like the critter. Remember the critter? Yep. From yeah, the wheel yeah. shop. Yeah, the critter. Yep. We just found another critter, guys. Oh, check that out. And it was made to shuttle cars in and around the Grand Central. Is that old New York Central Green? Right. Conrail. And Conrail we Blue. We can't figure out. We can't figure out Fort Greene because the, the shoes, the power shoes, are gone. So we're going to hook it up uh, and use it for the for our turntable. It and that one, one other car will fit on the turntable. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll hook it up uh, strictly battery now. All right, and there's the third color scheme, guys. There's the New Jersey Transit stripes, the orange, magenta, and blue. This thing's got quite a history behind it. And I don't know if you could hear our tour guide. He said, been around. Our tour guide said they're actually going to fix it up to run it off uh, just electric to move things around the yard and on and off the turntable when they get that set up. I'm not going to have you 
See the orange engine over there? Mm -hmm. That is a bull. I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mention Lord Bald when they're walking. Yeah, you said the magic okay. word. All right. <laughs> we'll go over. Don't step on the rails, step over the rails. I gotta be like all the promotional videos on YouTube for these big railroads. Absolutely. Okay, this is Goldwyn locomotive built in 1950, 1,000 horsepower. It is a US 4 4 1000. Again, built in 1950, Goldwyn was out of business in 1960. Yeah. Uh, but they were the world's largest manufacturer of steam locomotives. Every country in the world had a Goldwyn locomotive, steam locomotive. They tried to get into the uh, 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 into the diesel business, but again, it, it was a maintenance headache. They were unreliable, um, and working on them was a real pain in the neck. So, you know, they just couldn't give away the locomotive. So by 1960, Bolton was out of business. Now, they were uh, made in Ridley Park, Pennsylvania, Delaware County. Eddy Stone. Eddy Stone, right. There's there the is power still there. <laughs> the, 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 the office building is still yep, there. Still the headquarters there. are still there. Wow. Uh, and there's still uh, uh, operation going on, except it's owned by the Boeing Corporation. Oh, no. And what did they make there? Planes. Yeah, Osprey. Osprey aircraft. Well, they did, uh, actually, they did uh, So, Jamie, that's what those cars are down at Jim Fort. And a 600 power traction motor taking the power off the overhead line, and this was made in 1932. Nice. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow, and 1932 to 1990. Yes, and I've been on this 10,000 times. Wow, <laughs> when they originally came out, I remember they had blue velvet plush seats wow. that had a uh, a gear at the bottom that the conductor stepped on and turned the seat around because mm. of Reading and never rode backwards. Nice. <laughs> and that was that was a that was a uh, sales pitch for them. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. You always never. Forward. Yeah, you always, always move forward. forward on the Reading. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just like the Polar Express, they flip everyone around. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't realize I could do that. I've ridden many electric trains, guys, but I don't believe that I've ever been on one of these. <laughs> well, see, where I grew up, I saw more steam and, uh, well, as tourist railroad and yeah, electric yeah, yeah. for passenger than I ever did diesel. Yeah. Like diesels, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not that old, but just because I grew up near the Northeast Corridor, right, right, I saw right. so much electric. Right, yes. yes. There just wasn't as much diesel because you didn't need it. <laughs> Um, they also had at one time. There it is, the Grand Trunk Western. That oh, no <laughs> you way. can't see it uh, real close. But that originally started out as a Reading baggage car, <laughs> then went to Railway Express, then the Grand Trunk Western. Now back to back to us again. It's back home. <laughs> back, back home. home. <laughs> right. Wow. What's our CVMX on that car? No way. On the yeah. Amex. Commercial vehicle mileage crossing. <laughs> Max. <laughs> Mark Bear across the car. Remember, Pennsylvania. I believe it was Pennsylvania Railroad. It's company that bought it. Ready. I'd have to double check on it. One of the railroad companies. <laughs> Here's where the Pennsylvania Railroad line comes in. This was New York Central here. And then that line finally goes back to their restoration shop. Seen a couple of these on my uh, end scale layout for sure. And we're back to Beeline Service Diesel. Imagine paying to fill up this gas tank. Probably a couple thousand gallons there. Fill that with gas, it's probably worth more than my truck. Uh, 
Ah, so here's something you don't see very often, a GE U30C. This is a 3,000 horsepower. Now, this is where we started, guys. He's different. It's weird. Yeah. All right, so we finished our guided tour around the yard. And I'm still going to have a look inside the museum, and I'm still going to uh, come back out here and do some still photography. But first, we're going to look in the cab of this GP7. So hopefully you guys are going to be able to see in here. I don't know how the glare is. It's hard to tell with this camera. It only has about an inch uh, screen. I think you're probably seeing more of me than the diesel. But I'll try to get some photos and overlay that too. This will give you an idea. This is uh, face and forward on this engine. This will give you an idea of the length of the hood you're looking down. In fact, if I put you here, this would be the view the engineer has from the window. 